Hi, welcome to the class. My name is Florence Chen. I'm a faculty member of Five Branches University. I am very honored to be invited to give you guys a brief talk about traditional Chinese medicine. Out of all possible topics of Chinese foundations that I can choose from, I pick tongue diagnosis. Why? Because this is what we do in the clinic. All right, here, let's try to recreate a clinic situation. A person, particularly if it's a new patient, walk into the clinic treatment room. We start asking them, okay, now go ahead, telling us what brought you here. And the person started to talk about his or her own situation, right? And then we interrupt them, you know, asking questions here and there, trying to rebuild uh, the patient's condition according to the signs and symptoms the patients tell us. And then finally, when we can catch a break, we say, now let me look at your tongue. Let me feel your pulse. And that's when we start to see a lot of puzzled faces. Okay, patients listen to us. They follow our instructions. They stick their tongues out. But then they are wondering, what's up with my tongue? Why is that so important? What do you see in my tongue? Okay. Out of all the uh, body parts, body organs, why are Chinese medicine doctors so interested in your tongue? Okay, since you are thinking of applying to a acupuncture college, I guess you have some ideas of Chinese medicine already or at least you think you know, right? Okay, so I guess you know it's all about qi. Qi, Q-I, or the character here. Okay. Uh, qi, what is qi? Qi is the energy. Qi is the life force. Qi is also the air you breathe in. We can talk days and days about qi, and we can never fully, completely uh, finish the whole concept of it. Qi is the most fundamental principle of Chinese medicine. And then if you are more sophisticated in Chinese medicine knowledge, you know the five elements too, right? You know the wood, the fire, the earth, the metal, and the water. And you know they are associated to our organs and meridians. And you know we have to keep in balance. That's what Chinese medicine is about. Everything is about being balanced. However, you eat well, you exercise, okay? You even do qigong or yoga to cultivate your qi, but you still get sick, right? I mean, that's life. Everybody still gets sick from time to time. Why? Well, of course, it's imbalanced. But then, what if you do when, if, uh, when your body is imbalanced? So that's one of the points I'm trying to make today. Okay. It's important we know about our body. It's important we take good care of our body. But when it's imbalanced or you know, when you get ill, when you get sick, you, need, you go to a doctor, you go to an acupuncturist. And then there has to be some way for the doctor, the acupuncturist, to make a connection of what they see on your body to the knowledge they have in their acupuncture schools. And that's what's going on in our TCM clinic. Okay. The way to connect the uh, Chinese medicine theory to the, uh, your real life acupuncture clinic experience is by doing a set of diagnostic skills or techniques to fully under the patient's condition and then make correct diagnosis and have correct uh, treatment principle following that. Okay. In Chinese medicine, we call it four diagnostic methods. Here it is. Okay. Uh, inspection, observation, osculation, and olfaction, interrogation, and palpation. Okay. Those are just fancy terms. Basically, that means watch. Okay. Seeing things and smelling, listening, asking questions, 
and feeling touching the patient. Okay, let's go from the very bottom up. Palpation. Say if a patient comes in with knee problems, of course, you know to touch the knee, you know to manipulate, you know to do physical exam, trying to figure out what's going on with the knee, right? And then there is another important one. It's called pulse diagnosis. Okay. Uh, you, I think you have seen the acupuncturist doing that. The acupuncturist, let's go back to this one. Rest the hand onto your wrist, trying to figure out all the things going on with all the meridians and all the body organs you have. And then interrogation, you know, asking questions, asking about the signs and symptoms, asking the patients, also the accompanying family members or friends. Because sometimes we are so objective, you know, when we think we know our body very well, a lot of times we are giving out the wrong information. So it is very important to make your own observation, asking the patients important questions, and also asking the ones who are accompanying the patient. And then uh, smelling and listening. Okay, what do you listen? You want to listen to the wheezing, the breathing. Okay, you want to listen to the voice and you want to smell any abnormal smell. Okay, for example, I think many of you know, a uh, rotten apple smell is associated with diabetic patient, right? So sometimes you can find out what's wrong with the patient or you know what's going on with the patient's condition by listening and smelling them with the abnormal voices and abnormal odors. And then finally, inspection, observation. Okay, when a patient walks in, you don't see the whole patient as a whole. Okay, the vitality of the patient, the color, the complexion, the whole physical appearance. And then if they are limping, you know, if they are leaning to one side, and also you want to inspect the particular regions of the body. Okay. Sometimes, you know, if they come in with a particular uh, complaints, you know, like back pain, you know, you want to inspect the, the back, right? You may also want to uh, go down the whole nerve system to know, you know, which one is triggering the pain. And also, you want to see the patient from one side of the body, trying to understand the other side of the body. Okay, for example, tongue diagnosis. Okay, this will be our example today. From the tongue, you know, the, the body of your tongue, the coating of your tongue, your Chinese medicine doctor will be able to know a lot about your body condition. All right. Now, let's take a look of what do we see? Okay, so for example, here, today we are going to talk about the tongue. What do you acupuncturists see on your tongue? We'll have to go on to another really important uh, Chinese medicine diagnostic principle. Okay, that will be the eight differential diagnosis. What does that mean? That means we look into four sets of concepts. Okay, here they are. Is that yin or yang? Is that exterior or interior? Is that cold or is that hot? Okay, is that deficient or excess? Okay. That the four set of concept is named eight differential diagnosis in Chinese medicine. No matter how good you become in the future, no matter how famous you are. Later on, you know, in the future, whenever you see a patient, you always want to reflect back to those eight differential diagnoses. Whoever you see, you want to ask yourself, okay, is this in or yin? Is this an external invasion or the problem comes from inside? Okay, is that cold? Is that hot? And then you want to know if it's too much or is that not enough? Okay. So you'll be like, uh, yeah, I understand. But what does that mean? Okay, now let's start from looking at people's tongue. Here, this is the first picture we have. Okay, I'll have two case studies for you guys today. 
Let's one look at the picture. Tell me about the A principles. Okay. Ah,、uh, let's start from an easy one. Is that hot or cold? Think about it. Okay. I mean, of course, at this time now, you don't have much knowledge about Chinese medicine fundamentals. But look at this tongue compared to a normal tongue you'll be thinking of. Okay. This one, the tongue body itself is red, right? So it represents hot. So yes, it is hot. And how do I know? Okay, let me tell you the story. I was preparing for this、uh, slideshow, and then I was going around in school asking everybody to stick out their tongue. Let me take a photo. Okay, and then I grab this guy. I'm like, okay, let me take a picture of your tongue. And he went, no, 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 it's ugly. Okay, but then even though it was ugly, it was you know, even though he said no, 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 but then he he stuck his tongue out. And then I look at it. I'm like, "Wow, that's a lot of damp heat." Okay. And then he was like smiling embarrassedly. He said, "Yeah, I had an acute stomach flu. I had diarrhea for more than twenty times yesterday. I couldn't even sleep at all last night." I mean, that's a real story happening in our school. Okay. So you know,、uh, of course, I knew the situation later, right? But even before he told me the whole story. I knew that already. Why? Because I know how what you look at on his tongues. Okay. When I saw the red tongue body, I knew there was heat. When I saw the yellow sticky fur, I know there was dampness and heat, and also the prickles. Okay. You don't know what I'm talking about, but then there are red dots on the tongue. Those also indicates、uh, excessive heat. Okay. So if you Look at the person. You know, look at the situation. Look at the tongue, and then you reflect back to a differential diagnosis. You can know a lot of things about your patient without them telling you a thing. Okay, that's one interesting example. And then after you prepare yourself for this ugly tongue photo, which he said so. Let's take a look at this one. What do you think, and what do you see? All right, I can give you the answer right away. That's spring deficiency with dampness. It will be like what deficient, what dampness. Don't worry about that. Okay, those are the terms you will be learning、uh, in the next four years. Once you enroll in the acupuncture program, you will have all the times know to know about your spring, your liver chi, your kidney. In and your heart fire. Okay, at this point, don't worry about it. Let's just look at the tongue, trying to go back to see if that's in or yang, if it's hot or cold, if it's exterior or interior, and if it's deficient or excess. Okay, here the abnormality you can see will be the teeth mark, the whole edge of teeth marks. Actually, you'll see a lot of patients with teeth marks on the side. I took photos of many of our students with teeth marks. This one is the most obvious one. It's circulating the whole tongue. Okay, you see a lot of、uh, fluid retention. Okay, so that will be a deficiency sign. Why the fluid the、uh, the fluid retention is caused by the not functioning so well spring. So even though you will see the accumulation of body fluid, which is what you don't want, but it's caused by、uh, your spleen is not working well enough. And how do I know is the deficient condition rather than excess?、Uh, because of the paleness of the tongue. Okay, it's more deficient than excess. Alright, so we took a look of two. Person's tongues already, and I believe you know by now you think maybe you are starting to get it. Okay, and then let me show you what acupuncturists try to see on your tongue. Okay, here is what you do. Ah,、uh, after today's seminar, I encourage you to look into the mirror, stick your tongue out, look at your own tongue. Okay, and what you want to see? You want to see your tongue body. And you want to see your tongue coating. From tongue body, 
you want to see your tongue color. Okay, see what color is that? Is that light red? Is that pale? You know, almost white? Is that crimson red, like dark red? Or it's blue purple, okay? You know, uh, when it's blue purple, you know you have a lot of stagnation. Okay, and also you want to see the form of the tongue. Okay, is that tough? Is that tender? Is that enlarged? You know, is that has teeth marks as we just saw earlier? Do you see spots on the tongue? You know, like the first patient we have, you see like red, st red spots, right? And if you see any cracks on the tongue. Okay. Also, you want to see the mobility of your tongue. Okay, is that trembling? Is that deviated? Is that protruding? Okay. Uh, sometimes you'll see very narrow tongue. Sometimes you'll see very large tongue. Okay, sometimes, you know, especially for a uh, post stroke patient, you will see the tongue, you know, slide to one side. They all tell you a lot of stories. Okay. On top of that, we also see tongue coating. Sometimes we also call that tongue fur. Okay, actually, you know, because it's a easier, shorter words, most of your acupuncturists will say, you know, like uh, thin white fur. Fur refers to your tongue coating. And that's one of the more interesting topic that uh, doesn't really associate with your standard conventional medicine so well. Okay, usually your dentist will want you to scrape your tongue because you consider your tongue fur, tongue coating as something dirty, right? Something uh, accumulate bacteria, which is true, okay? Because your tongue coating is created by your stomach chi, okay? Uh, the, the process of your digestive system will create the tongue coating. So you'll want to have some coating, but not so much. Okay, when you have too much coating, that usually indicates some problem. So an ideal coating will be thin, will be even, but then, you know, when it's thick, when it's yellow, you know, or when it's even black, or look like burnt, it will tell you something too. So on the tongue coating, you also want to see the quality of your tongue coating. Okay, is that too thick? Is that too thin? Is that too dry? Is that too moist? Or does that look like curved? Does that look like exfoliated? Okay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And also you want to see the color of the coating. Okay, is that more white? Is that more yellow? Or it's so gray it looks like black, okay? And then after that, you know, after today's seminar, look at your tongue. I hope some of you will write down the descriptive. Pale, red, thin, white, fur. Okay, hopefully, at least one of you will do so. Why? This is a normal tongue. Okay, at the end of the seminar, I want to show you something normal, so you'll have something to compare to. A normal tongue or close to normal tongue looks like this. The color itself is pale pink. Okay, not too red, not too pale. And it has to be slightly moist. It has to be shiny enough, okay, to represent good chi, right? Okay, the size should be normal, the thickness should be normal, the shape should be normal. You should not see teeth marks on the side. You should not see deviation, and you see, should not see a deep central crack. Okay, and then as for a coating, that's a beautiful coating. Okay, it's thin white fur, meaning it's not too thick, it's not too thin. You can still see the the color of the true color of your tongue through the coating. Okay, that is an ideal normal tongue coating. All right, so look at this one. Compare your own tongue. What do you see? It's interesting, right? Okay, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you next time in our seminar.